All right, let's try this again. This time I grind the correct gears. Yep. I have no idea why I did that stunt. Oh well. Yeah. Turns on my fingers here. Yeah, I got the right gear that time. Amazing how it works correctly when you grind the right gears. So I can just reach in with my fingers and just rotate it. Oh, there you go. Amazing how that works. What a dumbass. Oh well. I don't have any thinner gaskets to put in here, otherwise I would knock it down on a couple set off I had the gaskets. They're all the same. Okay. Now let's see what the hell is going on over here. Still looks the same. Threads are good. Go ahead and change. I'm going to put the, uh, the new stud in here. See if it goes in. Okay. 
I can see if we get this other one out of here. the nut. Didn't want too far. Oh. Some stud dumbass. Missing nut. Definitely being a dumbass tonight. for that one. I gotta take the other one back out because these nuts won't go on this stud. So I didn't do it before. Yep, different thread. Oh wow. I mean, we'll look right you had two right next to each other were different. Pull this stud out. Put the other one back on it. Seem to get a head on this deal, huh? All right, I'm gonna put the other one back in. Enough. Gasket's drying up as we speak as we're doing this too. Okay, so we're back to where we started on that. Waste of a few minutes. Okay, 
Okay, so now I can go ahead and put this pump together. Put together for real. So first thing I do is get some gasket sealer onto the gasket here. Sealer on there. Just get that wiped off. Put it on the oil pump. Off the gears. Okay. Flip it on the gasket again. cover. Go up the other side. That one's good to go. That's wet. Pull this stuff out of here. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and goop up all the gears, keys, and everything on here. Time. Put that little small key in there. It's always fun. Get pretty good at doing it though. Done enough times. Put a little more oil in there, so pre loose the pop. Play around a little bit here trying to get the key to start in. He doesn't want to go into the gear. There you go. Goes in pretty tight. Is that blowing up too big? Maybe. Okay, once you get in that far, you're going to put some oil over here. Pre lubes that gear. So you can go ahead and slip it on in there. 
re-lubes it. Do the other side. shaft and I just slide that all in the case now this one you can put all the way in without putting a gear on it towing loaders you can't do that the aftermarket case is used, you can't do that either. Okay, there's the other cover here goes on. It's time to put our lock washers on here. Should be some chrome ones around here somewhere that we used. Yep. Thicker ones. There's thin ones. Tighten the cross pattern. Back and torque them. Definitely tighter with the oil in there. Okay, now we gotta put our key in there. And we put our oil pump gear on, drive gear. Now this guy has a big chamfer on this side and a very small chamfer on this side. This is the side you want the clip hitting against. If you do it on this side here, it wants to rip the clip off the shaft. So you want a sharp edge for the clip to hit against, preferably. Most of the time the gears have two big chamfers on both, one on each side, so you can't do that. This one's actually made correctly for once. That. Slip that right on there. That worked good. Well, I know what I shouldn't have done. Being a dumbass again. I should not put that out of cover on there until I had the clip on. Now I gotta fight it. Just might just take the cover back off. Always fun after you goop everything. Just 
stupid. You know what the deal is. Too much sleep, I guess. Usually I'm dead tired, so I don't make mistakes. Got a lot of sleep the last two days of Christmas. So I'm not used to that. I'm all screwed up. At least that's my excuse. Okay, there's our clip. Sharp edge and doll edge. Sharp edge goes against the sh gear. I mean against the shaft, so it stays in. Not against the gear. I'm hoping this thing will pop on there, but... Probably won't. You always rotate the gear around 180 so the keyway is not where the slot is. Don't expand anymore, you have to to get it installed. Usually I only go in there partially and then I slip it on from there. See how it's only partially on there? So I'll hold it with a finger on top and I'll use my screwdriver to shove it on on the bottom. That way it'll. I don't have to overextend it. Yeah. Clip went on. Okay, after I get the clip on there, where I think it's popped in all the way, then I slide it by pushing on the outer ear there and I push it around and get the slide on the groove, on the shaft to make sure it's in the groove. You see the keyways over here. So that one's in there all the way and it's tight. If this clip is loose, snap ring's loose, you gotta take it back off, put another one on or rebend it. It has to be tight. If it's free to spin on that shaft, it'll come off. So gotta make sure you do it correctly. Very important. Okay. Here the oil pump slipping around. It's on there correctly because I can turn on my thumb here, no problem. Or my finger. Either direction. That's what you want to be. Okay, next thing is you put the drive gear on the, on the shaft. We already got the key in here. Okay, you got a big bevel on that side and nothing on this side. Bevel goes in, key goes there. Just rotate the crank in the forward direction, it slides right on down, see? Go backwards, it comes off. See what we can see in there. There it is. So you rotate the correct direction, it goes all the way in. Instead of trying to force it on there. Okay, so spacer goes in. Now you can either put this spring in there or not. Spring doesn't do a damn thing. I don't use them. Obviously, once that's on there, where the hell is any of these parts going to go? When the oil pump's turning, that gear is against the shaft that way. That's the load direction. Can't unscrew this way unless you're turning it backwards. So, the spring doesn't do a damn thing wherever it went to. This doesn't do anything. Okay. I'm going to leave this loose for now. i got to do some more work. All right, so that's all in there. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to lubricate the gears right now when I got access, because you don't want to run the oil pump drive gears dry because there's a lot of load on them things. And they don't get oil for a little while. So just put a little bit on the finger and just rotate the motor. Just rotate it. 
rotate the motor, it sucks up all that lube. Forgot to do something again. I keep forgetting to do a lot of things. Okay, I take the old ball, drop in the hole. I already peened this with a hammer. I mean with lapping compound. I'll show you. I made a lapping stick here. So just a rod with a ball bearing welded to it. So you can lap the ball seat with that. You can do that until this gets a big flat spot worn in it. When you get a flat spot and it doesn't do anything anymore, you get cut up into the ball on it. Okay, when you lap it, that leaves radial grooves in there when you're rotating it. So what I do is I take the old ball, which I already dropped in the hole, you take a little bit of punch, you give it a couple of whacks with the ball peen hammer. That'll take those sharp edges that are sticking up from the lapping and it'll smush them down a little bit and give you a seal. Just like that. Now I use the old ball instead of a new ball. The new ball's over here. Okay, now I gotta get this ball out. I already put oil on there. But gravity helps you in this situation, so. Rotate it around, it'll fall out. Oop. Fill out. Oh, there's a ball. Imagine that. So then I throw these in a drawer and I use these for beating in a little pumps, or that's the ball where I weld these on. I don't reuse them after I beat on them. At least not for an oil pump. I use them for other things, but not the oil pump. All right, so these all go back in the drawer. We don't need to get mixed up with the, the good ones. Take the new ball, which came in our kit over here. Try to drop on the floor. Now you can put that in the hole. Okay, there's the uh, stock spring. That goes back in there. Okay, these are the top plugs. So this skinny one here, I think, is the one that's for the uh, tappet screen over here. And the short fat one is the one that goes in the oil pump. The normal looking one. So it doesn't have much pressure on it. Only a little bit. Use the impact knocker to hold it in. Tighten it down. That's enough. Okay, that's in there. Right. Pressure relief valve right here. A little bit of oil in the hole there. Just drop it in the hole. Got this nice heavier spring is for that. Good job. Just a nut it takes with it. And you got two choices. You can use the, the brass one that comes with it. You can use that, or you can use the paper one. If you want to use the paper one. 
they both seal pretty good. So usually what I do is I use the copper one, and if it leaks, I use the paper one. Tighten it on like that. Three quarter inch. Tighten it up pretty good. That should be enough. So if it seeps anything at all, then I put the other one in it. That should be good. Okay, this is our tappet screen right here. These are a little bit smaller in the cone motor version. And there's our plug. Now the spring does not go inside the plug. It pushes down on it. So the screen will go up inside the plug, but not the spring. It goes in there like that, see? Okay, that's how I do them. Now, sometimes I used to run a cork in the bottom of these holes. I'm not sure. I don't think they do it on these later ones. I think that was all stuff they did on the early motors. So just to make sure though, I think we should go check on the book. Sometimes they do goofy things on these things. Theoretically, you don't need no seal if it's pushing down on it. It doesn't have to be 100% oil tight. It just has to be pushed down against the surface. So most of the oil goes through the screen. So it doesn't really matter. But I think they only used the cork on the uh, earlier, earlier motors, the panhead motors. This is a shovel motor. It's just a little different. All right, so we got to go find a parts book. We're going to screw down on the floor. What are you doing down there, Scooby? You sleeping there? Hey, Scooby sleeping on the floor. Look out, Scooby. Okay, so we got to find an old parts book. This is 61 to 71. It'll show you more than the 41 to 84 book does. Books are only good for about three or four years, and then you start leaving stuff out. But the books are only made in ten-year increments usually. But if you find these old original books, they they have them for every couple of years if you can find them. So you're looking here for the oil pump stuff. Tappet screen is not with the pump. So you're looking to look at the case. See, they're only showing the cone motor over here. Not the generator. Over here's the generator motor. <clears throat> On the later book, you only get the uh, cone motor picture. You only get that picture. This one here, we get the generator picture. Okay, now you look for our tappet screen hole. Here it is, right here. It looks like they all show on a cork of some type. 88. Check valve seal 2. Why would you put two corks in one hole? 88, 52. That makes absolutely no sense. Oh, that's late 52 to 65. Okay, so it's not for our year. Just like to have different stuff in here. Spring, 88. Check valve seal. That's 86, wrong number. Check valve body, 262. We're over here on this side, I guess. 82, 66 oil screen, 66 to 69. So you got three variations. You got this one here, you got that one there, and you got this one here. And then we got a cone motor. See how they mix them all up on you? Okay, so it doesn't take no washer on this one. So I didn't think it did, but got to make sure. When you don't do these motors uh, every other week, you forget. Or in my case, I haven't done one in a few years. So, got to remember. Doesn't hurt to double check, obviously. Okay, so that goes in with nothing on it, just like it should. 
easy on this side. Uh, the one we took out had a little oil pump drain plug washer on it, which is the same one as an oil pump case plug. So that was on there like that. Let's see if that does not fit. Okay, so that goes on there like that. It's got some tension on it, which is what you want. Not a lot, though. And you put that in there with an the impact knocker also. Pretty tight. Alright, so there's your oil pumps all installed now. Simple, huh? Now, this here is the space that goes here on the seal. I went in and polished the surface here. Had a little bit of surface rust on it, and also I smoothed it up with some fine paper. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little lube on that and stick it over here while I'm thinking about it. Bingo. Finish it up this side of the case. Don't hurt to finish up a couple things while you're at it. Okay, now the... I don't like having holes open once you get things going further together. There was a plug around here somewhere. There it is. There's a chrome one. We're going to get a CAD one for them. For now, we just put that in a hole to keep dirt out. Alright, so that's how you do that. So one oil pump installed. Real simple, huh? All right, we'll be back. Okay, we're back. Okay, I need to... Oh, I forgot to put this in the oil pump. Oops. I guess I wasn't done with the oil pump yet. Alright, I thought it was all done with the oil pump. Nope. Yeah, I'm going to interfere with our cam video. Alright, last part goes in the oil pump. Got a wrench around here somewhere, wasn't there? Nope. Late pumps are tapered pipe thread on there. The earlier pumps are straight thread. That's the difference between early and late pumps. Now you see how this nut, you don't have access to it? That's why you have to take the, put this in last. You don't have access to your nut there to hold the pump on. Alright, so now we got it all done. Oh well. Good way. Now this is not, is not going to be used on the bike anymore because this is your, for your chain oiler, which we plugged up right here. So. This doesn't do anything anymore. So all you do is make sure it's in there and tight and don't mess with it. So that's pretty straightforward. Now over here in your breather cavity, this is the screen that goes in here if you want to run it. If you don't want to run it, leave it out. Later bikes don't use it. Didn't make any difference whether it's in there or not, I don't think. If you want it in there, it goes in like that. So that kind of separates the oil out from the breather system. I don't know how it really does anything because this other tube right here goes right next to this tube. So this is a check. This is where it sucks the oil out of this reservoir. So I'm not sure how that's going to make any difference whether it's in there or not. Let's go ahead and put this cover on. See, it goes in there right next to this other one here. That's what makes it work, is having two next to each other, not this stupid thing. This doesn't go in between them. So, so I'm not sure what the end result is having that in there. But anyway, there's a lot of motors. I don't put them in there. If I have one, I use it. If I don't have it, I don't leave. I don't put it in. So that's your call on that. You can figure out what you want to do with that part. All right, that's it for the oil pump.